friends, welcome back to CQ. CQ stands for Class Questions. It's a segment where listeners and readers of No Syllabus submit a question to Soundboard with me. If you have a question that you would like to Soundboard, you can do that at nosyllabus.com. With that being said, let's jump right into it. Question number one, at what point did you feel safe regarding your savings? From Clueless Saver. Short answer, never. But if I had to put a number next to it, 100K. Now, I want to frame this behind Morgan Housel and Charlie Munker. Morgan Housel, he is the author of The Psychology of Money, amazing book if you haven't read it. He mentions, getting money requires taking risks, being optimistic, and putting yourself out there. But keeping money requires the opposite of taking risks. It requires humility and fear that what you've made can be taken away from you just as fast. That explains never feeling. Charlie Munger, rest in peace. Somewhere along the way, he mentioned, I don't care what you have to do if it means walking everywhere and not eating anything that wasn't purchased with a coupon. Find a way to get your hands on 100K. And that stuck with me. Now, there are a lot of financial experts out there that mentions you need to have three months, six months, maybe one year worth of expenses in your savings account to feel secure. If you're cautious, maybe two years worth. I'm not sure. And I'm not an expert on that, so I won't speak on it. For me, it was the 100K. Here's a reason for that. 100K is what stuck with me because at the time, it just seemed impossible. Charlie Munger mentioned it's one of the hardest things to do. And I agree, but mostly because my paycheck didn't match my ego. When you're getting out of college, you think everyone is waiting for you and you're going to change the world. And what you realize is nobody really wants you. You're not that important. You don't garner that big of a paycheck. You're like, all right, I'm just going to graduate really quickly and make quick $500,000 and then become a millionaire. And then you find out you really don't know anything. But the good news here is that you think you know a lot. So therefore, you can absorb all the rejections along the way. But it does humble you. Now, if you're in New York City, you will realize it's how expensive it is to actually live. Because of that, every paycheck you make kind of disappears very quickly. There's this funny video of a raccoon where they wash all their food and they got their hands on cotton candy. And the raccoon start washing the cotton candy and it just disappears. The raccoon looks so confused. Where did it all go? And that's how I felt when I first started my job. I would get the paycheck and it would just all disappear. And I'm like, where did it go? I have no idea. But let's go back to the main point here, 100K. Why? I didn't do any calculations of three months savings or six months or one year expenses. I didn't do any of that. I just went for 100K. I think it is a worthy goal for everyone to pursue after, to feel safe or just in general, just to pursue after. It's not the money though. It's not the money, but the confidence that comes with who you became during the process of getting to that 100K. The shift in identity, the momentum, and achievement, it's addicting. It is the belief that you cannot buy. You can buy yourself a Rolex, you can buy yourself many things, but the ability to earn $100,000 from standing at zero, the confidence that comes with that level of achievement, a belief in yourself can't be bought. I think they'll pave the way for you. What I mean by that though, zero to $10,000 requires, in my opinion, very little change in your daily habits and information consumption. You can get to $10,000 with careful monitoring of spending. Go out a little less, don't buy silly stuff all the time, save a little, stay in. The whole point here is you are largely the same person. Now, 10,000 to 100,000 requires you to become a different person. Better both in terms of economic value to society and as a thinker. It requires you to change your habits, the people you associate with, and more. Most importantly, it requires you to start thinking longer term because, let's go back, your paycheck doesn't necessarily match your ego in the beginning. So it requires you to be persistent and be disciplined on the way you spend and what you consume. But the more important part here is the economic value to society. When I graduated, I thought I was worth $100 million. 
I don't know if I really thought that, but I thought I was worth a lot of money. Turns out I wasn't. It's a funny thing out there because the markets will decide for you. You go out there, put your resume in, you get rejected. You're like, oh, okay, I'm not worth that much. Cool. I guess I'll need to work on myself. To get to $100,000 requires not only for you to start saving, but it also requires you to increase your value to society. Therefore, you can ask or you can get better salary. In order to do so, you need to become better. You need to start consuming different information, daily habits, and etc. In general, I think that's why 100K works for me. And you never quite feel safe, I would say, because you feel that it can be all taken away from you at any moment. The moment you stop improving yourself, you feel like it can be taken away. But for me, 100K made me feel safe. Why? Not because it was 100K, because 100K could go away very quickly, but because who I became to get that 100K. I felt that I could provide an economic value that could help me earn 100K again. When I graduated from my undergrad, I didn't feel that way. It took so long to get anything of value, especially if you live in New York City. So because of that, I wasn't always sure. I thought, oh, I could lose this job tomorrow, and then it's going to take me another six months or so to get another job and barely make a living. I don't know. Zero to 10K requires very little change. You're largely the same person as you were in the beginning, but my belief is that from 10K to 100K requires you to become a very different person. And by becoming that different person, you have greatly increased your economic value to society and as an individual in terms of being a long-term thinker. The daily habits, how you consume your information, how you do your research, all of those things, you have improved, better version of yourself, 2.0 in a sense. And because of that, even if you were to lose $100,000, you feel that you can make it again. That's the belief and confidence that 100K gives you. Therefore, it makes you feel safe. Now, on the tactical side, or I I should say practical side, I think this is a better question for financial experts, but I'm sure it's three to six months or maybe a year worth of expenses savings would be great. That's not what I followed. I went straight after the 100K, and there's a nice sound to it. 100K, nice sound to it, versus I have three months savings. But to recap here, I've never felt safe, but 100K certainly mutes the feeling because you believe in yourself a bit more than when you didn't have 100K. Because there's nothing more empowering than you achieving something on your own. Thank you for the question. Question number two. I have wanted to leave my job for a long time. I finally got an offer for a lateral move to a nationally recognized company in a new industry with 55% increase to my salary. I'm not super excited about the job itself, but I don't know when the next opportunity to leave will come up. Should I take the job? From chronically indecisive. (laughs) I like that. So let's break this down. Usually when somebody asks a question, their mind is already leaning one way. And then they're really looking for validation. Not sure which way for you in this case. However, for me, it comes down to a few things. Let's start with one. How desperate are you for money in the next three years? One thing that jumps out at me is 55%. But I don't necessarily like to play with percentages because is it 55% increase from 200000 Is it 55% increase from $100? Not sure. But regardless, it's an increase. I don't know what your house looks like. What I mean by that is your financial house. Is your financial house in order? Do you have any outstanding debt or do you have any big purchases coming or anything of that nature? If you don't, if you don't have that, then money plays a little bit of a lesser role in this decision. But getting into how desperate are you for money in the next three years is important because if you have outstanding debt or cannot generate high margins on your current income, then you won't really be able to go after quote unquote economic profit. What do I mean by that? I'm going to go with 
Sonia Marciano, professor of strategy at NYU Stern, because this lecture alone got me thinking very differently. So not in terms of accounting. Let's, let's take the accounting term economic profit and accounting profit out of the way. But in general, economic profit. And what I mean by economic profit here is beating your opportunity cost and human capital that you are feeding the market. In other words, wildly outperforming your capability. So let me give you an example. I think all of us know a person or two that you know cannot be better than you. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it might be the dumbest person you know or you believe is the dumbest person, but they're living their best life because they decide to buy a place eons ago in Austin, Texas. And now it's a hot commodity to live there. What you want in life is to wildly outperform your capabilities. What I mean by that is accounting profit is you spend an hour, you get hourly pay, it's pretty linear, and you can probably extrapolate that until you're 65. But what I mean by economic profit is really wildly outperforming your capabilities, and you can do that by leveraging, such as internet or something of that nature that allows you to scale. However, you can't think about economic profit or generating or pursuing economic profit if you don't have your house in order because you need the money to pay the rent, need the money for groceries. You have people asking for money, whether that be creditors or your family members. You may have some big responsibilities right now or coming your way in a short time. What I mean by short time is within the next 12 months or possibly 36. So with that being said, if that is your case, I would take the 55% increase to my salary. Now, one other thing to mention for taking this job is your mentioning of nationally recognized company in a new industry. I know you mentioned that this is a lateral move and that doesn't sound so sexy. However, in a new industry, it might be almost a new job. But what is important to mention here is nationally recognized company. I was a product manager, but being a product manager at a startup of 100 people, at a startup of about 500 people, to a public company like Spotify, very different role. It's a very different role. And also I cross industry many times that kind of fits into quote unquote new job. Not as much, a little bit, but going to a nationally recognized company is a better move for your career, especially when you're young. Forget about the learning experiences and how you'll become more refined at your role, one thing that will help you is the optics. What I mean by optics is we live our life through filters. When you go to Harvard, you probably don't need to explain to people that you are smart. But if you go to, I don't know, Suhan University, you're going to have to explain to everybody that you meet why Suhan University has number one program in podcasting or what have you. You don't want to live your life having to explain everything. So when I got my first job, it was a startup, around 100 people. I love that company. Problem, I always had to explain what that company did. And when I was done explaining, then I had to explain my job. By then, no one cared, including my mom. My mom just wanted to know, can I pay the rent? Am I healthy? Am I brushing my teeth? Those are the things that she cared about. And strangers will care even less. So by just moving to a nationally recognized company, you'll save your breath. And you can use that time over the course of the next 30 years to take a trip in Ibiza or go to Europe, whatever you want to do. But anyway, what it allows you to do is make yourself more attractive in the eyes of strangers. And ultimately, it's those strangers that are going to give you your last thing here, the next opportunity. So in that case, I think it's all great moves. I would go for it. I've done so. Last thing, here you talk about, I'm not super excited about the job itself, but I don't know when the next opportunity to leave will come up. Two things, next opportunity to leave will eventually come up. It's just like the waves in the ocean. When you're surfing, you take the wave or you don't, and you sit there and think, well, when, when is the next set of waves? It'll come. That's not the issue. It's waiting for the next set. That's the issue. Can you wait? That's largely a personal question. It involves financial things, psychologically. It's, it's a lot of things. But can you wait? And then this part about I'm not super excited about the job itself, think of it as a stepping stone. Then you don't have to be excited about the job. 
you do it for a year and then you move on. You do it for two years and then you move on. Maybe you do it for six months and then you move on. Who cares? Good news is you're an at-will employee. You can leave anytime. So not being excited about the job, I think it's okay. Take the bag, get out of there when you don't feel like being there anymore or you just don't see any benefit to being there anymore. One thing I wish I would have done early in my career is to leave early. I stayed at some of my companies a little bit longer than I should have. It was great. It was easy. It was comfortable. But it is that convenience and comfort that kills you in the long run. Hopefully what I said helps. Thank you for the question. As always, everything mentioned in the podcast is in the show notes. If you'd like to hear the other two questions, head over to NSP Diary by clicking on the link in the show notes. It is easy to subscribe and even easier to unsubscribe. Thank you for tuning in and hope to see you around.